Is this, is this thing, thing on? on? Alright, what's my punishment? There's only one left. There is only one left. Yep. Right now, we are going to watch <coughs> yep. Fantano's review of My Beautiful Dark Twister oh, Fantasy. Damn. And you are not going to say a word. Do, do I have to agree with him? No, you just have to stay silent. You can't do any like... Mm, okay. Like I'm going to be... Silent. This is going to be me. <laughs> You're gonna think your pitch is frozen. Just, I've just realized it like probably the, isn't very good content. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna put the buffering wheel on me because that's what it's gonna look like. But I'm actually gonna be go okay, 22 minutes. Goddamn. No, no, this one, this one. The, that this one is the, the uh, redux. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. Here we go. Can I laugh or does that count? <laughs> you can laugh if you want. Hi everyone, Anthony Fantano here. <laughs> internet's busiest music okay. nerd it's time for an album review an album his head is so to. bald begging maybe I shouldn't say that that's a bit Kanye West's my beautiful dark twisted fantasy before listening to this album I I've never watched this, this you know stuff just okay running through my head there you go things I would say to kind of preface this review stuff like hey you know stuff like the VMAs the Today Show interview, the Katrina slash George Bush debacle, all the that, media that was gaps, funny. <laughs> all that stuff. That's just context, man. It's not important. This is music. Pay attention to the music. Leave your hate at the door. It's a very similar argument I made when I reviewed M.I.A.'s last album. But the more I listened to Twisted Fantasy, the more I kind of came to realize that that position is total and utter bullshit. Not because Kanye's <laughs> like gaffes are so unforgivable that we need to scrutinize this album using everything he says. That's not the case. The reason it's hard to ignore context on this LP is because Kanye's favorite thing to rap about is himself. Uh, 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 on here, he puts both his strengths <laughs> and his flaws on display and it kind of makes me wonder what his beautiful dark twisted fantasy is is it himself is it his life is it an album about his life basically the music here and kanye west's personal life are pretty inseparable on this album the lyrics here reference everything to the fish sticks joke on south park to the dude's very emotionally damaged love life. Rhyme-wise, flow-wise, I feel like Kanye is really creative here, very much on the ball, like the opener Dark Fantasy. There's a point where I laughed my ass off when he said, you got too many Urkels on your team, that's why you wins low. Damn! I'm loving a lot of the rhymes here, and even when I don't like a certain track, they are a little bit of a saving grace for me. And I think that track Bro, is what the f an awesome start <laughs> to this album, just kind of paints Kanye's rise to the top, and it's a little exciting. But Kanye does not just think of himself as a rapper, he also feels he is a singer. And I will say, singing is not the strongest tool in Kanye's toolbox. Sometimes his singing is a little off, but it basically gets the job done. But the best thing this LP has going for it for me is the beats, the production. Just great sounds, interesting samples. I remember when watching live performances of the song Power, I didn't exactly know how to feel about the King Crimson sample in that track, but I'm really loving the studio version. The song clips flow together really well in that song and make something that's really, really cinematic. It's just kind of a brave new world for sampling, in my opinion. I've always been a fan of sampling, always been an advocate, always felt like there's so much more potential for it, but copyright is kind of standing in the way of that. I would say the song Power is a great example of the, the, the artistry <laughs> that sampling music can offer. What the fuck the is it? Is it on purpose? To do so. And there are other tracks that... Um, it's when he doesn't say a word properly and doesn't want to reshoot, so he'll just do a little weird Like edit. a little meme. Yeah. Okay, fair <laughs> enough. Surprisingly enough, do a lot with a little, like the song Monster. Just has not really lush sounds, but very kind of stripped down and simple. Primal drums, minimal synthesizers, but still sounds really dramatic and kind of eerie. The track 
blame game kind of fits that bill too. Very dramatic, but not overdoing it. There are soul samples on here, a really fiery and classic spoken word piece delivered by Gil Scott Heron, crowd sounds, just a lot of clips flying by every moment on this album. Whether you like Kanye or not, this thing is ambitious as hell, especially from a sonic perspective. All the tracks flow together really well. It's very cohesive. Kanye takes most of his guest MC spots and relegates them to a few posse tracks that come together really well. And even though I'm not the biggest Nicki Minaj fan, the biggest Rick Ross fan, they contribute some pretty good stuff to the album. But gripes, 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 because there are gripes that I have. And sort of the first one, maybe an appetizer, are the hooks. A lot of the hooks on this thing, either, to me, anyway, just an opinion, kind of come off a little corny or a little generic. I'm thinking of tracks like Hell of a Life, So Appalled, All of the Lights, maybe something that I could just kind of come across on any new rap song in the mainstream on the radio. And that kind of lets me down because most of this album doesn't really strike me as being that type of music. I'm going to say something that may spark a lot of angry comments, but at least half of what I'm hearing here feels very artful to me for a mainstream hip-hop album. But my biggest gripe with this LP is something that I mentioned earlier in the review, and that's how essential it is to me to be a fan or at least be interested in Kanye on a personal level to enjoy this. I think even someone who hates Kanye can get into some of the storylines on this album at least a little. The position that I'm in is that I don't care. There's fantastic production here, there's great rhymes, but I'm not so interested in hearing about Kanye West's mm -hmm. up social life so much that I'll just be sitting on the edge of my seat through eight minutes of the blame game or nine minutes of runaway. I get kind of bored. What do you want me to do? But people love the sick little details. People love dirty laundry. And I could see this album appealing in a big way because of that, especially with how expensive and impressive the music sounds. I enjoyed a lot of what I heard here. I just didn't like a lot of the drama that this thing served up because it just doesn't feel all that relevant. I'm feeling a light to decent six on this thing, but that's just my opinion. You guys, you were asking for this. Let me know what you think of this album. Is it Kanye's greatest work yet? Should we even be taking context into consideration when enjoying this album? And what should I review next? Anthony Fantano. There you go. That's my first listen through. I mean, I feel like you gave it a lot of praise for... Yeah. I feel like if I reviewed something like that, that'd be like a nine. Yeah. It was really... Um, um, man's a really cool monster minimalistic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I think... Um, I mean, I don't disagree with, like, the reason why I think it's so low is he just doesn't like Kanye. Yeah. <laughs> like, if someone else released that, like, I'm sure he would have he would have loved it, but, I mean, fair enough. I mean, he's got an egg on his head, so, like, what should we listen? No, he's a good music reviewer. I do rate his, yeah. um, I actually do rate his uh, technical knowledge. Like, there's yeah. things that he knows about that on a much like, deeper I've never level even thought of yeah that. like yeah. we could maybe pick up on it but he knows oh this is this this and yeah. this so I do rate that but yeah I feel like if I reviewed or if someone else was saying that much praise about an album it'd be like a 8 or a 9 I think yeah. but maybe it was just being a bit harsh I wonder if he like I know it's sort of his meme now that he's sort of yeah. like the My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy but like I'm sure that if this was released now like no context beforehand uh, he'd probably give it a pretty high rating I think well he gave the last two well what did he give Donda this is know, a actually. 6 out of 6 album <laughs> yeah. I rate that comment this is the 9-11 of hip hop reviews <laughs> Jesus Christ um <laughs> kids see goes cool album I especially love how Kanye spoke about himself yeah. during the whole album yeah <laughs> Uh, he did give, like, when he redid the My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy review, he gave it a six again. Okay. Yeah. What about... Um, I'll look up Donda. Yeah. I think Donda is good. Yeah, Donda is the, one of the best albums of this year, in my opinion. Seven. Yeah. Um, Junya is pretty shit. No, Fave yeah. tracks. Junya Watanabe. Donda, he's got Donda <laughs> chant in favorite tracks. That's a meme. 
Jesus Lord, in my opinion, is the yeah. best song. Or No Child Left Behind. No Child Left Behind. Mm. God breathed on this. <laughs> That's a fucking banger. <laughs> All right, so Tyler's punishment. Not Done. that bad, considering Done. I had to upload a disgraceful photo of myself <laughs> with a terrible TN-based song. Yeah. I mean, I rate that, you know. Fair play. <laughs>